How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? As far as you can chuck what we're going to study today. We're going to put a wet cloth on the groundhog's day. Every, Feb every February 2nd, the nation goes crazy over the groundhog, also known as a woodchuck. It's a rodent of, of the family belonging to a group of large ground squirrels known as the marmot. In hopes of foreseeing, foreseeing length of winter, early spring, or more colder weather, a mammal weather animal. Woodchuck tracks are fairly easy to identify. They have four toes on the front paws and five toes on the back paws. Leviticus 11.27 And whatsoever goeth upon his paws among all manner of beasts that go on all four, those are unclean unto you. Whosoever touches their carcass shall be unclean unto the evening. To the Jewish people, to the Jewish law, that woodchuck, that animal with paws, like cats and dogs, are unclean. The Pennsylvania Dutch were immigrants from German-speaking areas of Europe. The Germans already had a tradition of mark making or marking candle maps. February 2nd as Badger Day. So February 2nd already had a candle mass name and the Pennsylvania Dutch had a Badger Day where if a badger emerging found it to be a sunny day, thereby casting a shadow, it predicted the prolonging of winter by four more weeks. So if the badger, if the woodchuck were to see the sun, more winter, more cold. Candle mass. Candle mass is a primary Catholic festival. Well, I'll be darn a holiday that has Catholic foundation and a little runt of a rodent that is to tell us the weather. Who would even imagine that Mother Catholic would be in this nonsense? But here she is. So thus already, I would not have to go into these pages to tell you with the Catholic Festival Foundation of this holiday. Should a Christian partake of Mother Satan's church? Catholic festival, but also known in the German Protestant, German, Pennsylvania, German Lutheran Church. In folk religion, various traditions and superstitions continue to be linked with the Holy Day. If you take the Y off, that add I for me myself. Although this was downcast by the Protestant reform reformers in the 16th century, particularly several traditions, say traditions, akin to weather lures, lures, use candle mass weather to predict the start of the spring. So we have a foundation outside the rodent. We have a foundation in the Catholic Church uh, around Fe uh, September, February 2nd, we have a thing to see what the weather will be so we can see we're going to have a early spring or a longer winter. Without the rodent, it's in the Catholic Church. You just combine the rodent with the Catholic Church to make people happy. That's how the nonsense got in the modern church today, where you go into a Baptist tree, church and there's a Christmas tree. Where you go into the Baptist church and they have a Santa Claus. Don't tell me. Go, go find my thing about Christmas tree, about Christmas, and go find my study about Santa Claus. Four or five units of that. The weather predicting animal on candle mass. So see, already in Catholic church, we have an animal predicting weather was usually a badger. 
Although countrywide, the animal was a bear or fox. The original weather predicting animal in Germany had been the bear, another hibernating mammal. But when they grew scarce, the lore became altered, a perverted, a change, an addition, a subtraction, as many modern Bibles do to the King James. The bear and the Antichrist are one of the ones of the, of the Bible that are representations of the Antichrist. Daniel 7, 5. 1 Samuel 17, 34. Fox repitches the Roman government in Luke 13, 32. Go tell that fox, Jesus said. They all have paws. And according to Levitical law, they're unclean. The presentation of Jesus at or in the temple is an early event in the life of Jesus. He was eight days old. Describing the presentation at the temple in Jerusalem in order to officially welcome him into Judaism. That is celebrated by many Christian worldly churches. I don't celebrate nothing of the eighth day that Jesus was circumcised and brought to, to the priest in Jerusalem and Mary gave her offering to show that she was a sinner. I don't celebrate that. I'm a born-again Bible-believing Christian. The nonsense idiots of the Catholic Church who killed Christians, according to church history, believe this nonsense. I believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yes, eight days he was circumcised. He was called Jesus. Mary brought her brought the, the birds for the sacrifice of her sin offering, for in her hand she held the lamb. But I don't celebrate this nonsense. I don't celebrate candle mass. The devil would have you to be fooled. With the account, Luke's narration of the presentation of the temple combines the purification rite with the Jewish ceremony of the redemption of the firstborn, Luke 2 to 23 to 24. And read Leviticus 12, too. Where Mary brings a sin offering and offers that sin offering. Because she is a sinner, though taught wrong by your Catholic mess. What is that stuff you're smoking every time you get a new pole? You know, they say when the smoke comes out of, out of the uh, Vatican, they they elected a new pope. I wonder what they're smoking to come up with this nonsense. In the Western Christianity, there's nothing to do with the Bible. The additional name of the service that day is Candle Mass is added. This feast day is also known the Feast of Purification of the Virgin. Notice the words, Virgin, of the meaning of the Lord. In some liturgical churches, Vesper, on the Feast of the Presentation, marks the end of Ephany season. Another Catholic word. Coming to the end of Christmas. Christmas ends December 25th. At midnight, there's no more Christmas. Unless you're a Catholic. And the priests need more money. To buy candles. Candle mass. What it all comes down to. In the Catholic Church. Especially since the time of Pope Gelesius I. 492 to 496. Who in the 5th century contributed to its exp expansion at the presentation of celebration on the 2nd of February and its fourth joyful mystery of the rosary. You didn't realize that the Catholic Church and all its tradition, all its superstitions, the rosary, the virgin, and all the celebrations of this little rat day has this foundation and the roots of Catholic. Remember on St. Patrick's Day when we did that study? Oh, we're going to read green. And when I went in the store today, they have all green shirts. And I'm looking at that. And that time when that was done, green represented the Catholic Church. Orange represent the Protestant. You did do the wet cloth on the St. Patrick's Day and Mother's Day. You did do all the series on Santa Claus. 
You did go through the five studies, should a Christian observe Christmas. You have looked into my files, my YouTubes, and my SoundClouds to get all those videos or audios and find out what a Christian is to serve, what a Christian is to do, and what not a Christian should do is why you're listening to this. You want to know, according to the Bible, according to what I should live my life for Christ to be right, to avoid sin, and avoid the all things appearance of evil, the Groundhog Day, he's so cute, what am I supposed to do? I'm telling you what you're supposed to do. Right now, I tell you already, I'm only on the first page. Throw it in a garbage can. And as far as Paul said, if we can give thanks and bow our heads and say, Lord God, I thank you, you can try a little groundhog meat. Maybe it tastes good. You want me to try groundhog meat? I can bow my head and say, Lord God, I thank you for this. Just don't tell me the afterwards what it is. When I try new food, I don't want to know what it is to afterwards. But, hey, you want to slip me groundhog meat? I'll try it. Just don't tell me afterwards. As far as this nonsense, we'll get more. That's page one. Traditionally, Candle Mass had been the last feast day of Christian year that dated to the reference to Christmas. You've done my Christmas ones, haven't you? Christ Mass, Mary, Christ Mass. Put Christ back in Christmas. He was never there. Unless you want to eat him. Unless you want to drink him. Revelation 12. Traditionally. <laughs> The Western term candle mass or candle mass, C A N D L E space M A S S with a capital M. Now, why can't Christians get that for C H R I S T space capital M A S S trying to put Christ back where he never was? It's a foundation of the Catholic Church. I take the M off. Refer to the practice whereby a priest uh -oh, on 2nd of February bless beeswax candles. You know the expression when I grew up, never mind your beeswax. <laughs> for use throughout the year, some of which were distributed to the faithful for use in the home. For a cost. And one of the other things was you had to pay for candles for dead souls. To get out of purgatory. You had to burn candles and pay for a candle. Drop the coin in the box. You know why I remember that? Because a little boy growing up in a Catholic church in New London, Connecticut. I went up and I, I put I, I put the little thing to burn a candle. And that priest came up to me and said, young boy, you got to put your quarter in the box before you do that. And there was a little box there. I had no idea. You got to pay for it. That's what I learned. Bless, bless beeswax candles. I didn't know they sneezed. For use throughout the year, some of which they were distributed to the faithful for a cause. Revelation 120. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden sticks, candlesticks, candlesticks, candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Now that's where they get this. And it will say that they are the mother church. They are the only church. And upon this rock of Peter, the gates of hell will not prevail. No. Yeah. Wait a minute. Your church is based in hell. Your church smells of hell. Your church a fumigates of sulfur. Because it's not upon Peter. It's upon Jesus Christ. John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. So we're going to light a candle. And I've been in churches, Baptist churches, we lit the candle. <laughs> Never mind your beeswax. Uh, do I want to read this part? It was not hard for the people who lived by candlelight to make the connection. At some point in history, people began bringing candles to the priest to bless. Forty days after the celebration of the birth of Christ, the ceremony was called Candle Mass. Imagine Oh, priest who dresses like mother, call him father with no children. Can you take my candle and sneeze on it so I can say, bless you, my child? Satan is slick. Man, if you looked at this in the mirror, if you looked at this with the Bible, 
In Poland, the feast is called, oh boy, <laughs> not even going to pronounce it, feast in, po in, in English, feast of Our Lady of Thunder candles. That's what it's called in Poland. Thor. You know, remember Thor, the big hammer? Is this his wife or is this his mother? This name refers to the candles that are blessed on this day, called Gromis. Gromis? Gromis? I knew a Grimace. He was that big purple guy from McDonald's. Since these candles are lit during thunderstorms and placed in windows to ward off storms. And let's see. Jesus said something, and I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. You didn't quote that, did you? So again, we have an object of candles and candle worship. This feast has been referred to as the Feast of Presentation of the Lord within the Roman Catholic Church since the ritual revisions of the Second Vatican Council with references to candles and purification of Mary de-emphasizes the favor of the prophecy of Simon the Righteous. Pope John Paul II, is that the one that said Genesis is a myth? Connected to feast day. See, feast day. God had for the, for the Levites, God had for the nation of Israel, the 12 tribes, he had particular feasts. The feast of Passover, the feast of unleavened bread, the feast of trumpets, what we're going to do is we're going to make our own feast, Jeroboam. And we're going to have our golden calf where you get milk, Jeroboam. And we're going to have a complete copy from stolen money from the book of Judges. And we're going to return the money to our mother and we're going to go get some images. And we're going to hire a Levite and call him father, though he's younger than I. And I'm going to have a house of images in Ephraim. Judges. Pope John Paul connected a feast day with the renewal of religious vows. In the Roman Catholic Church, the presentation of Jesus in the temple is the fourth joyful mystery of the rosary. Paul had mysteries, seven mysteries in the Bible, and none of them are the rosary. Made up. Make your own Bible. All right. The idea of the Groundhog Day comes from the ancient Christian celebration. No, Catholic celebration. Known as Candle Mass Day. So, don't offend the Catholics. When it comes to Groundhog Day, call it what it is, Candle Mass Day which marked the midpoint between the winter solstice and the spring equinox, according to the National Centers of Environmental Information. On Candlemas Day, clergy would bless candles needed for winter and distribute them to the people. The Poxotani, and I'm going to say that, every time I'm going to say this name, it's going to be wrong. Brown Hogs Club website says, superstition, super stupidity, Held that if the day was sunny and clear, people could expect a long, rough winter. But if the sky was cloudy, warm weather was soon warm weather would arrive soon. In 1886, Punxsutawney Spirit you, newspaper. Wait a minute. Spirit newspaper. Let's go to John, 1st John, I believe it is. 1st John. 1st John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, written to Christians, believe not every spirit. Punxsutawney Spirit Newspaper. <laughs> I love this. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. Did you know that this rat is a seer? He's a prophet? No, he's not. Doesn't he tell us the weather? That's a seer. That's a clairvoyant.
Punxsutawney Spirit newspaper printed the first news of the Groundhog Day observance. The Punxsutawney Groundhog Club celebrated for the first time at Gobbler's Knob, according to History.com. And the newspaper's editor declared that Phil Punxsutawney's groundhog was Americans' favorite weather forecasting groundhog. And there are others. Phil in the Bible means lover of horses. Phil was an evangelist. Ooh. See, Satan does know the Bible. And on the Mount of Temptation, he quoted the Bible to Jesus. Wrongly, but he did. All right, Punxsutawney. The area was originally settled by Lilap, or Delaware, Delaware Indians. And the name Punxsutawney derives from the native name in Yami, a Lipani language, which translates to Town of Sandflies, <laughs> or Town of Mosquitoes. Little blood suckers that suck blood. Yeah. What's your name? Legion, for we are many. Alternatively, the name is said to come from another Nami term, which means poison vine. Their vine is not as our vine. Oh, yes. A proper tradition celebrated in Canada, the United States, on February 2nd. Candle mass. It derives from the Pennsylvania Dutch superstition that if a groundhog or a woodchuck, chuck, chuck, wood, emerging from its burrow on this day sees its shadow due to clear weather, it will retreat to its den and winter will persist six more weeks. And if it does not, if it does not, if it does not see its shadow because of cloudiness, spring will arrive early. Well, I'll tell you what, if you put them in the oven, turn the oven light on, you will see a static. And you'll have a, I guess, a young, people eat this thing. I saw recipes. Now, I just got Peter angry with me. Please eat tasty meat. Animals. All right, save the groundhog. Eat the potatoes first, then have them afterwards. Cook them in whale blubber oil. While tradition remains popular in modern times, studies have found no reliable connection between a groundhog seeing its shadow, and we'll talk about that at the end, and not, or not, and following arrival time of spring-like weather. So in other words, with the realm of this, this, this rodent looking to the prediction of weather, he's full of baloney. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. These are websites I found. Ready? This is why we're doing this study. Did you know that Groundhog has Christian organ, origins? These are actual websites. Jesus in the Groundhog Day. The Groundhog Day fought faith. Well, I'm not going to mention his name. A Christian blog. The Christian message of Groundhog's Day. The theology of the Groundhog Day, etc., etc., etc. I bet you there were messages preached from churches of pulpits about this rat that's unclean. 350 for an hour and a half, maybe. You serve with gravy or, I don't know, white wine or red wine. They're always mentioned a Groundhog Day is, is an entry, February 2nd, 1840, in the diary of James L. Morris of Morgantown in Pennsylvania Ducks Country. According to the book on the subject by Don Yonder, or Yonder this was a Welsh district both to the Audubon, Auto, autobiographer was commenting on the neighbors who were of German stock. The first reported news of Groundhog Day observant was perhaps made by the Punxsutawney Spirit, Spirit, Spirit newspaper, fake news, of Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania in 1886. Up to the time of going to press, the beast the beast has not seen its shadow. However, it was not until the following year in 1887 that the first Groundhog Day considered official was celebrated here with a group making a trip to the Gobbers Knob, part of town to consult the groundhog. 
You mean like when, when Saul lost his father's asses and he went to go find Samuel to see, her, to see where the asses were? Samuel, the seer. You have read the, the parenthesis note about the seer in the Bible. People went to this groundhog and said, oh, please tell me the weather. So, uh, we make the celebration a group made trip. People have gathered annually at this spot for the event ever since. Cyphers Freeze, Simon Freeze, 1867 1942, who was city editor of Proxitani uh, Spirit, is credited as the father who conceived the idea of Groundhog Day. It was also being suggested that Punxsutawney was where all Groundhog Day events originated, but where it spread to other parts of the United States and Canada. The Groundhog celebrations of the 1880s were carried out by Punxsutawney's Elks Lodge. The Lodge members were the beginning of the Groundhog Club formed later, which continued the Groundhog Day tradition but the Lodge st started out being interested in the groundhog as a game animal for food. Food! And it started to serve ground it started to serve groundhog at the lodge as a food. They had been organizing a hunting party on a day each year in late summer. Now let's look at some events of the Elk Rock Lodge and the Bible and true Bible Christianity, shall we? So this is from this part right here from the Alps. The principles of charity, justice, brotherly love, and fidelity to recognize a belief in God, to promote the welfare and hence the happiness of its members, to quicken the spirit of American patri patriotism, to cultivate good fellowship, to preserve itself as a fraternal organization, to provide for its government, the compassionate and protective order of the Elks of the United States of America will serve the people and communities throughout compassionate programs demonstrating the Elks care and Elks share. The Elks organization was, was founded in New York City on February 16, 1868 under the name of Jolly Corks. Ready? By 15, 5 plus 5 plus 5, 5 in the Bible being down, actors, this is the Elks Club, entertainers, Elks Club, and others associated with the theater. They were going, uh, in a sharing years, membership expanded to other professions, probably preachers and Christians and all other stuff. Remember, they were going to cook up the groundhog and serve it and go for a hunting party. The ultimate aim and purpose of our order, capital O, is the brotherhood of man and the observance of real responsibilities of the relationship. This is true religion by whatever name it is called. L, L, I, capital E, capital L, capital D, capital S, the official organ, organ of the Elks Lodge. So whatever religion's name is. There are many men in the world, and no doubt many in the Lodge of Elks, who cannot with a good conscience ascribe to the creed of any church, but whose lives are filled with noble deeds of love and charity. Such men will surely find a place in heaven from the Elks memorial service. So you don't have to go to church, according to the Elks, to go to heaven. Just be love and charity. The groundhog was named Phil in 1961. The largest Groundhog Day celebration is held in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. I don't know why I keep on saying Philadelphia. Where crowds as large as 40,000 gather each year. Nearly eight times the year-round population of the town. The official, the official Phil... The official Phil 
is pretend to be a super centurion, a person sufficiently over than 100 years of age, typically one who has reached the age of 110. So I guess he's getting to the point that um, maybe he'll be without age. Maybe he'll be eternal, maybe. Now, there's been many groundhogs, but there's only one Phil. Whoa. Having been the same forecasting beast since 1887. Come on, you've had one groundhog since 1887? Animals are given human standpoints. In 2019, the 133rd year of the tradition, the groundhog was summoned to come out at 7.25 a.m. on February 2nd, but did not see his shadow. Almost like sunrise service. If he sees the sun. Fans of Punxsutawney Phil waited his arrival starting at 6 a.m. Man, you get church service people are coming in late all the time. These people are coming early. Thanks to a live stream provided by Visit Pennsylvania. So they got live stream just like church services. And it's once a year. Sound familiar for Catholics? These people go to church there one time a year to see the, the, the rat. Catholics go to church twice a year to see the booby woman. S star and then see Saint Nicholas on Christmas. But you're not gonna see Jesus Christ, and you're not gonna see Jesus Christ with the groundhog. The live stream has has been a tradition for the past several years, allowing more people than ever to watch the animal meteorologist. Man, if I was a meteorologist, I'd be offended. I guess live stream is gonna work for the Antichrist too. Beast. The slumbering Groundhog Lodge, which was first formed in 1907, has carried out ceremonies that take place in Quarryville, Pennsylvania. Here's another rat. It is used to contend, contending revival to Punxsutawney over the Groundhog Day thing. It employs a taxidermic specimen, a stuffed woodchuck. <laughs> Exodus 20, verse 4. <laughs> Exodus 20, verse 4. Exodus 20, verse 4. You know, if this wasn't so real, I'd be laughing my head off. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that's in heaven above or that's in the earth beneath a burrowing animal or that is in the waters under the earth. That's against the Bible. There are few others. There are other few others in the United States having their own groundhog and their own groundhog today. Other places. For K, most assessments of Phil's accuracy. All right, this is how accurate Phil is. He's a poor seer. Has given accuracy lower than what would be expected with random chance, with storm facts. Almanac given an estimate of 39%, and meteorologist Tim Rock of the Weather Underground given a 30 cent percent accuracy rate between 1969 and 2016, a range chosen because local weather day was most reliable from 1969 onward, and a 40 cent, 47% record in that time span with predicting early spring. The National Center for Environmental Information using a basic met metric of above normal temperatures for early spring and below number temperatures for more winter placed Punxsutawney Phil's accuracy at 40% for the 10-year period from 2019. He's poor. Terrible. Other poor results from analysis are reported by the Farmer's Automat, which itself has been known for forecasting questionable accuracy as exactly 50% accuracy. The National Geographic Society report in only 28% 28, 28 success. This is some God you go to church once a year. He's not even higher than 40%.
So let's look at some scripture, shall we? Deuteronomy 18, 20. Deuteronomy 18, 20. He's a seer. You go to him for a future. This future is weather. Deuteronomy 18, verse 20. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name. Uh, he doesn't speak in the name of Jesus, but he sure worship. Which I have not commanded him to speak. And that shall speak in the name of other gods. Candle mass. Catholic. Even that prophet shall die. Well, he lives over 110 years old. He's got a special class of age. And that's the say in our heart, heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing fall not, nor come to pass, that thing which the Lord has not spoken, but the prophet has spoken presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. What did I say? What were the numbers again? By, the, by men in the business? 39% accuracy, 36% accuracy. He doesn't speak in the name of God, but people seek him for godly knowledge of the weather. He's a false prophet. Matthew 7, 15. Matthew 7, 15. Christians, get in the Bible. Get out of this worldly mess, will ya? You know... Now that you're hearing these videos, you are without excuse. Matthew 7, 15. I'm trying to help you grow. You can't grow with the world. God is not going to have a, have a fellowship when you, have, you are part of Jesus Christ and you're adulterating with Satan in the world. You can't get them together. Uh, Matthew 7, 15. Beware of false prophets, which comes to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are wait, ravening wolves. Yes, I won't see sheep clothing. That. This rat comes in the clothes of a meteorologist, and he's a failure. Matthew 24, 24. You go to him to predict. You go to him for a future event. Now listen, weather is important. A farmer, a fisherman, and there are industries as carpentry. You've got to base your life work on the weather. If a carpenter works on someone's roof and tears it all in pieces and it's going to rain, that carpenter is going to be in deep trouble financially and in reputation. Repetition, excuse me. And you've got people on a Catholic holiday. That Catholic holiday also says they're going to predict the spring or winter. Falling upon this rodent. Let's look at the scriptures. Matthew 24, 24. There shall arise false Christ, false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders. Insomuch that if it were possible, they should deceive the very elect. Now, I'm not looking at the calendars or anything like that. But if February 2nd, candle math were to be on a Sunday, would the Christian, the true Christian, saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, would he go see and view the rodent over Jesus Christ being preached in the church? I don't know. I'm just saying. Romans 16, 18. Romans 16, 18. For they that are such serve not the Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. You can eat. Groundhog. You can make money off the groundhog. You can sell t-shirts and little bobby head uh, groundhogs. You can sell bumper stickers. You can sell hotel room. You can sell restaurant stuff during Groundhog. And by good work, good words, Harry, Harry, the, the rodent did not see his shadow. 
and fair speeches. They give a speech every time they pull this rat out. Deceive the hearts of the simple. Oh, goody, he didn't see his shadow. Oh, spring's coming around the corner. Let's stop and go get our tulips and get our bulbs and plant our garden. And then you get hit with a blizzard. And then you blame God, an act of God. 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11. Man, we got so much scripture. I don't think we're going to hit it off. 2 Corinthians 11, verse number 13. Ooh, 13. Beware 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Candle, light. You know, if you take a candle and you light it, and you put a light up to that candle and against the wall, the candlestick will have a shadow, 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 but the flame will not have a shadow. The only thing. For Satan is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his Satan, his ministers, also be transformed as ministers of righteousness. Whose end shall be according to their works. Satan has ministers. Satan has workers. 2 Timothy 4 3. 2 Timothy 4 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears. Isn't he so cute? He doesn't say a word. He doesn't kick our Santa Claus. He doesn't preach. He just tells us the way. Oh, he's so, look, he looked at me. The preacher's mean. He preaches mean. He's against God. Second Peter 2 1. Second Peter 2 1. He's so loud. You're disturbing the people. People are not going to come to Christ by you doing that. Your husband scares me. Second Peter 2 1. But there were false apostles also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, candlelight mass, even denying the Lord, Catholics, that brought them that bought them and bring unto themselves switch destruction. Revelation 20, verse 10. Revelation 20, verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast in a lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Well, that rodent is a beast and he's a false prophet. 40% chance of accuracy. Now let's look at him as a seer. All right. First Samuel 9 9. I'm going to be a little rush here. First Samuel 9 9. Maybe we can get this all done. First Samuel 9 9. 9 9. Before in Israel, this is what I told you. When a man went to inquire of God, thus he spake, Come and let us go to the seer. For he that is now called a prophet was before time called the seer. God, I have a question. God, I need help. This is where you get that guru on the mountain. You climb that mountain to, to get to God. This is where it comes from. 1 Samuel 9, 9. And everybody travels and gets in their car and travels to Phil. Phil, tell us. The great and mighty Phil. The great old Phil. 9, 18. 1 Samuel 9.18 then, so, then Saul drew near to Samuel in the gate and said, Tell me, I pray thee, where the seer's house is. You know, Phil and Punxsutawney has a little house and they open the little door and they pull Phil out and they... Phil has a house. The Bible says that the seer has a house. Ooh. Kind of interesting. You know what Samuel means? It means ask of God. 
You know what you do to the groundhog? You ask him what God controls. It's not Mother Nature. God controls the weather and also Satan. Job chapter 1. But God gives Satan permission. Satan needs permission. But God overall is in charge of the weather. But when you go to Phil or you go to any woodchuck or any rat to say, give me the weather or any candle mask or any rodent like that, you are advising that rodent to be God. First Samuel 9 9, first Samuel 9 18. Come on. So, second Samuel 24 11. Second Samuel 24 11. And when David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, David had his own prophet. David had his own seer. Punxsutawney, I keep saying Philadelphia, Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania, and other areas of, Amer of America have their own seer, a woodchuck, a badger, whatever it could be, a beast of meteorology. It's an anti of the true Bible characters of God. It's an anti-Bible thing. And the next great, great anti to come in history will be the Antichrist. He'll be everything like Christ, but not Christ. Isaiah 30, verse 10. Isaiah 30, verse 10. Isaiah 30, verse 10. Which say to the seers, see not. And to the prophets, uh, prophets, prophesy not. Unto the right thing, speak unto a smooth thing, prophesying to see. We don't want to hear the true prophet. We don't want to hear Jesus. We don't want to hear the gospel. We don't want to hear about heaven. We do not want to hear about hell. We want that cute little rat to tell us, is spring coming? Oh, Mr. Rat, please tell us, how do I prepare my garden? What would happen if a street preacher stood at, at that gobbler's knob, stood in Punxsutawney Phil on Groundhog Day and proclaimed that Jesus saves? Would they want him to preach more or would they try to shut him up because the rat needs to speak? I guarantee they would shut the preacher up. And they probably got it so a preacher could not be a gobbler's knob when the rat is, has his time. I guarantee it. Because it wasn't for the Constitution of America. It wasn't for the fact is that the sidewalks are public. Daytona Beach would love to throw me out from preaching the gospel. Guarantee it. Leviticus 19.26 Leviticus 19.26. They would not want a street preacher. They would not want any gospel preacher, but they want their rap. Leviticus 19.26. Ye shall not eat anything which is blood. Neither ye use enchantments or observe times. It's February 2nd. Let's go bless our candles and go see the wood, chuck, chuck, wood. Honey, get the candles and we'll go see what the weather's going to be. Let's go see the great rat. And we'll get the kids their little hats and we'll get the little shirts and we'll get the bumper sticker for our mobile vehicle. And we'll proclaim not the scriptures on the car. We'll proclaim the rat. As they do in Florida here, and as they do in California, the big rat. Deuteronomy eighteen fourteen. Deuteronomy eighteen fourteen. Deuteronomy eighteen verse fourteen. For these nations, the nations that are going to be kicked out of Cana, which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observ observers of time. February 2nd, Candlemath, December 25th, 
price mass. Unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God has not suffered thee to do so. God says, don't be diviners. Don't go to the observers of time. Worship me. Be holy, God said, for I am holy. How's that? 2 Kings 23, 24. 2 Kings 23, 24. I'm having fun. I hope you're learning. 2 Kings 20, 23, 24. A revival breaks out. And what did they do with the revival? Moreover, God bless America. No, can't. More the workers of the familiar spirits and the wizards and the images and the idols and all the abominations that were sp spied in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem did Josiah put away that he might perform the words of the law which were written in the book of that Helkiah the priest found in the house of the Lord. You want a revival in America? You want to do right by God? You got to get rid of all those holidays. You got to get rid of those imagery. You got to get rid of all those idols. You got to get rid of those uh, wizards. You got to get rid of those, those spirits. You got to get rid of all the divination. And you got to get rid of Mother Nature. And you got to get rid of all this junk. And you got to proclaim God and Jesus Christ alone. And you're not going to find that in the Catholic Church on every city in America. But the Constitution said, all religion has rights. Okay. When was the last time you had a great, godly, Bible revival since the Constitution? Go ahead, hate me. Go ahead. You'll deal with God, not me. I'm just preaching the truth. Galatians 4.10. Ooh, New Testament. We're going to close with the New Testament. Whoa, don't do that. Isn't it bad enough you kicked my God? Now you got to go to the New Testament. Galatians 4.10. Ye observe days, second, month, February, and times and years. I'm afraid of you. Least I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Well, I guess Paul didn't like it too much. I guess Paul was kind of fearful of what the Christians have gotten themselves into. So am I. I believe the Laodicean church age is a mess worldwide. The garbage is going all through the churches. Read. Laodicean, church age, Revelation chapter 3. How rich you are. How great thou art. You'll have no need of nothing. Let's see what God says about this church age, including me in it. I'm no better. I hope these videos, oh, get them out, they're free. Give them to friends. Link them. Do whatever you need to do to get the word out. For Jesus' sake, for Jesus' glory.